major fail today. All right, guys, well, we have just had a fantastic dress rehearsal for this video because I just did this entire video and forgot to turn on the mic. That guy, right there. So, take, just, just feel pity for me. The new EVGA Silent Series power supplies offer excellent silence and efficiency through their new EVGA Eco Mode technology and also features a seven year warranty for worry free gaming. Click the link in the description to learn more. All right, so today's video is not going to be any fancy B roll or any product reviews or anything like that. We are just going to have a discussion right now about uh, how much graphics power do you really need. And the reason why we're doing this video is I get asked this, this particular question day after day after day, all day, every day, till the end of time. So I figured instead of trying to write out responses over and over and over again, I was just gonna make a video and basically answer everybody at the same time. So if you guys don't wanna look at my ugly face, go ahead and feel free to minimize the video and do something else at the same time. I'll be showing some graphics cards throughout this video, but I'm not gonna be doing any crazy editing or anything like that. Normally this is the kind of thing I would do a gameplay commentary to, but I don't have any recorded gameplays right now that I can use, nor do I have any time right now to record any gameplay. So, so like six months ago or something like that, I did a video about how to buy a graphics card. And what we did in that video was we educated the viewers about the different parts of the graphics card, what the specs meant, and how, how to understand what you were reading when you were looking at a spec sheet of a graphics card. But I quickly realized that didn't help anyone understand how much power they need when it comes to graphics cards. So there's really three things we're gonna talk about here today. The first thing we need to talk about, and we need to get our minds kind of warped. It's not gonna be easy. It's not easy to change your perspective, but it's not easy to change your way of thinking. But for the sake of the next 10 or 15 minutes, just try. I promise it might be worth it. Might. There are only two categories that any of us will fall into. Not three, I can't do my fingers. Not three, not one, two. That is the category of need, in the category of want. There is no other category. Need and want, that's it. There is no do not need. If there was a do not need, you wouldn't even be watching this video. I have, a, I have a feeling there's nobody watching this video right now who has no need of learning about this topic because that's why you clicked on it. At least I think so. I hold in my hand right here, visual representations of need versus want. This is a GTX Titan X. Most people would want this. This is an R9 270. Most people don't need more than this. So this is need versus want. Does this really do anything that this doesn't? You know, the, the, the answer to that obviously is a very big depends. And we're, we're not talking about the diapers. Although I think the baby's getting changed right now. Cause I do smell, I do smell a, a bit of a, a brown surprise. If any of you out there are dads or moms, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It's just like, gets sucked into the ventilation system and gets kind of recirculate. Okay, anyway. So does this card really do anything this one doesn't? Um, well, the short answer is no. They both render an image, they both play games, and that's ultimately what they're designed to do. They're designed to display an image for gaming or desktop productivity, whatever. The differences are where the threshold of performance starts to diminish. Now that kind of moves us into category number two. You can't determine where that diminishing return is until you understand what it is you need and what your expectations are for your gaming experience. Now, oftentimes people will think about CPUs and RAM and overclocking of their CPU and their motherboards and water cooling, but they stop to think about one of the most important pieces to any gaming setup that holds probably more influence over your gaming experience than any piece of hardware you could buy. Can anyone tell me what that one piece of hardware is that everyone seems to forget about when it comes to buying hardware? The display. If you're buying a graphics card that can overpower your display, 
You are not doing yourself any favors. You are wasting money. You have popped out of the need category, went well into the top of the want category, and all the money you had left, once you got there, you were just kind of shoveling off to the side. That's kind of what Skunk Works is. Skunk Works has just turned into a want and then into an unnecessary need and then to an impractical bucket and then hopped out of the impractical bucket into the just phenomenally stupid bucket. But that's what I like about that system and damn it, that it is what I like. It's, it's kind of like Sir Mix a lot and his big butts. He just can't lie. Neither can I. I can't lie. I, li I like it. To understand how much graphics power you need, you need to answer yourself two questions. One, what panel are you going to be using? What resolution are you going to be using? What refresh rate is it? What response time is it? You could take this GTX Titan X right here, and if you hooked it up to a 1600 by 900 display that's got 59 hertz refresh rate, and it's got a 48 millisecond response, I don't even think that's real, but it's got a 48 millisecond response time, you have just really like, it's like crossing the streams for Ghostbusters. It makes absolutely no sense. In fact, the entire world space and time as we know it would continue, discontinue to exist because what you just did made no sense whatsoever. So what panel are you planning on using? Maybe you're gonna buy a panel at the same time. Is it a 60 Hertz panel? That means it can only draw 60 frames per second and keep the image in sync. And we're not talking about the artists in sync, by the way. So if you have a 60 Hertz panel, then you're not gonna need a GPU that's able to push more than 60 frames per second by a lot at the quality settings that you're gonna set them at. Usually the trade-off though, is if you get a powerful GPU that's able to render way more than 60 frames per second and is gonna be able to max out the sliders and stay above 60 FPS, well, you have what we start moving into what I call future compatibility. I'm not gonna say future proofing, Future proofing is a term that is tossed around so much on forums, people don't understand, and they just like to say, I am future proof. Future proof means you are free of being influenced by the future, and guess what? You're not. Future compatibility with the power of your graphics card simply means your graphics card is gonna stay relevant and performing in your desired performance zone longer than a card that doesn't. That is future compatibility as far as I'm concerned. Now I have here the ROG Swift 144 Hertz 1440p monitor surrounded by three VG248 QEs, which are also 144 Hertz panels, but at 1080p. Clearly to run a game on the VG248 QE is gonna require less power, uh, graphics power than the Swift because there is a lot less pixels in 1080p than 1440. Now, if you're gonna be running at a panel of something like even a 720p, you could get away with even less and still have a fantastic gaming experience. In fact, Coconut Monkey, believe it or not, a little fun fact, is still using a 720p. Head on over to Twitter, at Coconut Monkey, it's down here somewhere, and actually tease him a little bit. Be like, ha ha, you're still on a 720p, because um, I do, you know, because I'm because monitor snob. But you know, he was actually able to use the GTX 580 for a long time, from 2011 all the way to the end of 2014, and still didn't have to upgrade. The only reason he did was because I, I sold him a 780 extremely cheap, and now he's able to just play any game he wants, completely maxed out, and frame rates are through the roof. In fact, when he turns on V-Sync, his monitor, or his graphics card runs at like, 40% used, something silly like that while he's gaming. So that's a huge factor that comes into play when it comes to choosing your graphics card. Now, the other thing I mentioned on there is how long do you want to keep your graphics card? If you can't afford, an afford annual upgrades, then you're gonna want to get a more powerful graphics card today. I know that some people don't understand that concept. You buy the most powerful graphics card that you can afford today, and it will last you longer. If you bought a lesser, inexpensive graphics card today, you're gonna have to buy a new graphics card usually every year to year and a half to stay on top of current technologies and game requirements, depending on which graphics card you got. We have here, like I said, the R9 270. This graphics card, two years ago when I did the review on this, was absolutely phenomenal. This thing could handle 1080p graphics on any game I threw at it at either minimum of medium settings, many of which high, and stay right around that 60 FPS range. Of, and the reason why I say 60 FPS is because most people, according to Steam survey, is running 1080p or lesser panel at 60 Hertz. So 60 frames per second is all your panel can draw before it starts tearing 
the screen across horizontally and getting misaligned images. That's what refresh rate is on a monitor. But the unfortunate reality is that as nice as this card is, it is starting to show its age today and it's only, uh, it's not even two years later actually since I did this. I believe November of this year uh, will make two years. This is only a year and a half old on this card. And the reason for that is the limitation of VRAM. This thing only has two gigabytes of VRAM. And as we progress in gaming technologies and people start utilizing more textures and, and other facets of performance, manufacturers or of graphics cards uh, are starting to increase the amount of VRAM on the cards because developers are starting to really tap into and utilize VRAM. We have seen quite an exponential rate of increase on VRAM, usually double. Every generation usually has double the amount of VRAM. It says two gigs, and then the, like the R9 290 and 290X had four gigs, and when it comes to NVIDIA, they had 1.5 gigs on the 580, and then three gigs on the 780, and then the 980 had four gigs, we only went up one, but then it went to the Titan X, which went to 12 gigs. So you're gonna start running into VRAM limitations, which means to keep this card relevant, you're gonna to have to start turning down textures and other things to low and sometimes off to keep your game from stuttering and just having incredibly low frame rates. So the recommendation there obviously is buy the most powerful graphics card that you can afford within budget today and it will last longer. Now I can't tell you what your budget is. I can't tell you if it's worth it, worth it to spend $50 more to get this card over that card because I don't know what you have to do to get that 50 bucks. I don't know if you have to turn a trick. I'm not gonna judge. I mean, who am I to judge? This he cast the first stone who was free of sin or something like that. I don't know. I, I'm definitely not free of sin, so I'm not even gonna throw that rock. But that kind of brings us to the last point here, which is budget. <music> Now, as I said, I can't tell you how much to spend, but I can tell you that when you're building a gaming rig or a rig specifically built for gaming, the most expensive component in your system is and should be the graphics card. Now, advancements in API technology or the technology that communicates between the hardware and the software, uh, especially GPU and CPU as well, and those threads and draw calls per second, is going to improve. In fact, that means a lot of people on older graphics cards are actually gonna get a synthetic bump in performance as we move into DX12 and Mantle and things like that because it's going to utilize less hardware, uh, especially CPU bound systems, systems that have lower end CPUs and higher end GPUs. So you're not gonna want to spend a ton of money on your CPU and motherboard. You're gonna wanna put the bulk of your budget into your graphics card. As I said, I can't tell you how much that number needs to be. But I can tell you that typically it's right around 40% of your budget ends up being spent on your graphics card and the rest of the stuff being CPU, motherboard, memory, uh, case, power supply, and cooler. So, or hard drives and all that stuff. But anyway, guys, I hope this video has helped you understand a little bit more on what to think about when you're buying a new graphics card. Trust me, I would love nothing more than to be like, hey, uh, Robert, I, bro, you should go get yourself a GTX 970. Clearly that's the graphics card for you. Oh, and Rich, uh, AMD R9 280X, that's the card. Based on your, that's it. That's what, you, don't even look anywhere else. I'd love to be able to do that for you, but I can't. All I can do is arm you with some of the things to think about and then you guys have to take it and do the, the legwork yourself. I kind of like doing these videos where I just talk about topics where we're just chatting and giving you guys some knowledge, especially since I have a lot of useless knowledge up in there. But every now and then I can actually say something meaningful and I'd like to share that with you guys when I can. So do me a favor, head on over to Twitter, I'm at Jay's Two Cents, and tell me guys, or tell me what top and gals, or gal, there's at least one gal watching, I think it's my mom probably, hi mom. Tell me what topics you guys would like me to cover in this kind of a, you know, one on one or one on 333,000 or whatever we are right now, so that I can do more of these types of discussion videos where I try and arm you with knowledge and uh, make you guys and everybody watching better for having a, uh, a more open way of thinking when it comes to this hardware. So please head on over to social media, tell me what topics you guys would like to see me talk about and maybe we'll do it once or twice a month um, or even just a segment on Tech Talk or something. So as always guys, wouldn't be able to do these videos without your support. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.